Mediterranean, 50 miles northwest of Algiers, the smoldering hulk of the British troop ship Empire Windrush lies abandoned after one of the greatest sea rescues in history. A boiler room explosion tore a smoke funnel from the deck and touched off a raging fire below. The first of 1,500 rescued passengers arrive at Algiers. 18 were injured and four crewmen died in the blast. Women and children filed calmly into lifeboats. 300 soldiers jumped into the water. Rescue ships saved everyone, averting a terrible disaster at sea. Stone-throwing students and club-swinging police clash in Lebanon's capital city of Beirut. The outnumbered officers attempt with the help of fire hoses to scatter the rioters who are protesting against reports of American military aid to Lebanon. The students storm the police, turning the street into a bloody no-man's land. Cops and demonstrators slug it out for more than an hour before the angry mob is finally broken up by police. One student is killed, 29 others injured in the skirmish near Beirut's American University. A brief explosive incident in the tense, explosive Middle East. Debate over the European defense community reaches a crisis in France, where Marshal Alphonse Pierre Jouin, who opposes EDC, is fired from his military posts. Later, at the sacred Arc de Triomphe in Paris, even the premier of France, Joseph Raniel, is involved when passions flame over the hotly debated issue of France's participation in EDC. Noisy demonstrators surround the premier and the minister of defense, René Prévin, at a service honoring the memory of French soldiers killed in Indochina. Shouting, long live Marshal Jouin, they cry for Prévin's resignation. Premier Lagnol is surrounded and kicked by hooting demonstrators. Prévin is slapped and jostled before help reaches him. Communists and de Gaullists are blamed, while political tension grows in France. French forces in Indochina mount an all-out aerial counterattack with paratroopers to save their strategic garrison at Yem Bien Phu, reeling under the most savage communist onslaught of the war. Every plane, every available man is rushed into the battle to rescue the beleaguered fortress. Half-ton jelly gasoline bombs rain fiery death on positions occupied by 40,000 red troops. Over the outposts of the surrounded bastion, ammunition, guns, and other supplies are parachuted to the defenders who are under orders to fight to the last man. French paratroopers hit the silk, carrying the month-old battle to the Reds. French reinforcements arrive to withstand a threatened communist victory in the biggest battle of the war. A snappy American Legion parade in famous Miami Beach, Florida, heralds the world premiere at the Beach Theater of Warner Brothers' first Cinemascope musical, Lucky Me. Robert Cummings, one of the stars of the film, arrives for the premiere. Miami Beach's winter vacationists watch Nancy Walker and comedian Phil Silvers as they join Cummings in a hello to the fans. Lucky Me stars Doris Day as a superstitious showgirl in Miami where it seems to be a lucky night for Lucky Me. The cream of the nation's ski stars, silhouetted against towering snow-capped Mount Hood, soar into space in the North American Championships. High in the Rockies, where snow remains far into the spring, half a hundred jumpers join in a spectacular farewell to winter. Leaping wizards, flying 200 feet and more. Spread eagling the field, Billy Olson of Denver University, winging 212 feet to a new hill record, a champion collegian. At Aintree, England, the Grand National attracts a quarter of a million persons for its 108th running. And they're off. Ahead is a grueling four and a half mile course dotted with 30 of the toughest jumps in the world. 29 horses are entered, but the very first jump takes its toll and already three are out of the running. Second obstacle, a riderless horse cuts off another entry. The field 
pounds toward the treacherous Beecher's Brook. Slow motion captures the full grace and poise of the horses as they take the fence. And surprisingly, they're all over safely. Into jump seven, Coney Burrow, the pre-race favorite, is in the lead. There are more spills to come as the field thins out. Coney Burrow and Legal Joy, second last year, are first to tackle number 12 with its inevitable tumble. 13 proves unlucky for Legal Joy. He's broken his leg and will have to be destroyed. Only half the field is left now. Royal Tan, a 10-year-old Irish jumper, is moving into contention. That's Coney Burrow going down. He's broken his back, the fourth horse to be killed in the race. A loose horse tumbles into the ditch. Jump 28 takes a heavy toll. Into the home stretch, Royal Tan has the lead with Tudor Line closing fast. Here they come, the jockeys whipping and driving their mounts in the furious drive for the wire. Royal Tan or Tudor Line, it's anybody's race. But Royal Tan holds on to win by a neck in the Grand National. 